So I wanted to show you F210. And uh, here it is, memory analysis of autopsy. This is another one that used to be really hard to do with some, on, with some tools that were command line only and hard to use and autopsy makes it easy. So I have an old memory dump I made years ago when, uh, when memory dumps could be really small, like 130 megs, I think it's based on um, Windows XP or something. So I'd like to, uh, to make it easier, I try to use small things for all these projects in case people have, you know, computers with small hard drives and everything. So I've downloaded that thing. It's a seven zip compressed file. So you gotta go into your downloads folder and unzip it with seven zip which you may have to install if you don't already have it. And if you're using Windows 7, Microsoft hides everything just to irritate you. You have to get more options and then you go to 7-zip, extract to a folder called memdump, and there it goes. And everything goes nice and fast because it's a small file. So, all right. Now there's a thing in here which is 500 and... Uh, 500 megs, so it's a 512 megabyte uh, file. Half of a gigabyte is the memory on this virtual machine I made this from. So that's an image of the memory from Windows machine. And to analyze it, of course, we're gonna use autopsy, what else? And autopsy has a memory dump module. You have to turn on the experimental modules. So let's start autopsy. And it's probably already enabled on this one because I but I didn't find the mem dump in here. Maybe I haven't demonstrated it on this machine before. We're gonna see. You have to enable experimental modules because this is this memory analysis is apparently not completely ready yet. But um, I see if I have to do that before I launch it. Like before I do this, go tools, plugin, installed. Okay. Um, well, looks like, all right, I guess I'll close this and make a new case separate. Let's see what's tools. I said toolkey tools, plugins, all right. And then, okay. Uh, here's installed. I'll wait till it's, uh, it's ready. Okay, I go to installed. And okay, here's experimental. And I guess it was not turned on, so I have to turn on experimental. Okay, and then close. I think, um, oh, I think I had to click activate. Should have popped up some activate when I did that. Let's see if I can figure this out. Tools, plugins, installed. Oh, it is perhaps because it's already installed. Let's see, if I check the box next to, click this, there's experimental. If I check the box, oh, I guess it's already activated. Okay, I'm not quite sure why it didn't make me click some more things, but anyway. I think it's in there. We're gonna find out if it's not in there. We'll find out in a hurry. All right, so now I make a case, call it memory, and I import the memory image. Okay, so new case, whoa, new case, all right. And here's Microsoft popping up edge on my screen to irritate me, which is Microsoft for you. Uh, well, I hear a lot of complaints that they're doing this more and more. They're putting edge on the start button and edge that pop up and just in general irritating everybody. But that's Microsoft. Um, all right, it'll take it 30 seconds or so to launch a cache. Maybe, maybe not that long. This is the ARM version of Windows 11. It should run pretty fast. Generate a new host name, yeah, sure. Okay, now, memory image is an option, that's what I want. So I gotta find my memory image, it's in the downloads folder, in the memdump subfolder, and there it is, memdump.mem. That's my memory image. Okay, now, I wonder what to this stuff to check, I wonder if I remembered to tell you, ah, good. Okay, check them all, or get just these ones to make it faster, consoles, hash dump, LSA dump. Uh, looks like I've already done, I've already done this machine before, that's what I thought. I've already got these selected, consoles, um, hash dump, LSA dump. Okay, it looks like I've already selected the ones that matter. So I'm gonna accept that, and then next. And uh, in the next one, 
Just click next, all right? I've got everything checked. I don't know if that's necessary, but I guess I'm going to leave it and now let it go. And what this will automatically do is run volatility. Volatility is the tool to analyze memory dump images, and it is not easy to use. One thing is you have to have a template for the exact version of Windows, including the service pack, that you're using so it can understand it. You have to get the right template, then you have to apply it, then there are these long, complicated commands to get this and that, and this just runs all of it for you. It's fantastic. All these are just um, graphic environment that runs difficult tools. So it, like I said, this course got so much easier because of autopsy. We're almost in the kind of luxury that the professional investigators do that get NCASE or FTK. NCASE and FTK, of course, do everything for you too. You just open it, it does, uh, it's just they cost a lot of money. But um, all right, running module, it's running all these modules, consoles. Consoles will get console commands, which is the command prompt that have been executed, and that's what these are doing. These are scanning the memory image to see if certain things have been happening, like a browser, notepad, the command line, and it's there now hash dump. Hash dump is gonna get the password hashes from the memory dump. Those are also in memory because they're in the registry. The whole registry is in memory, and it includes uh, the password hashes and a lot of other things. Oh yeah, here's Microsoft Ads. That's charming. Can right. you spec specify this was Windows 6 uh, it figured it out. Oh, okay. You used to have to figure it out and specify it, but Autopsy did it all for me. That's why I say it's saving you a lot of bother. I have my old projects where it's complicated. <laughs> and this is just doing it all for you. LSA dump is dumping LSA secrets, contain um, unencrypted passwords on some version of Windows. Here's NetScan. I think that's giving you like network statistics like NetStat. So it's, and there's a PS list. That's the list of running processes. And uh, shell bags, we've talked about before. These record what windows have been opened. And I don't know why this is experimental. It seems to work fine, but presumably there are some bugs. But I haven't, haven't hit them. Anyway, it's doing a lot of work. For each one of these, it has to scan through the whole 512 megs hunting for things, looking for marks that tell it what part of the memory is. By the way, Mac memory analysis is next to impossible. Mac, for years, has been compressing the memory, which is a brilliant idea, by the way. If you, nobody has enough RAM, they compress memory. Everybody should do that, that's smart. But anyway, Macs do, and they keep changing the format. So you, if the free tools only work on really old Macs, and the expensive tools are really expensive, but you'd have to, Mac memory analysis tools, as far as I know, there are no free tools that are worth a damn. And you can't just use strings or anything. You need special tools to uncompress the memory. What size of this tool is open source? Uh, autopsy is open source, and volatility is open source. Okay. Um, the, but all the Mac tools are closed source, as far as I know. Black bag was one, and uh, they don't have free trial versions that are any good. I can't really teach a damn th thing about Mac forensics for free. The only thing you can do, which is all I've done when I did Mac investigations, is I write a bash shell script and get the active data. I don't get the deleted data or the memory. Except, of course, from a viewpoint of instant response, you can run things like NetStat and get the allocate. So you can, do, um, you can do incident response type forensics because there you're not trying to get all the data at all. You're just trying to get data that tells you about malware that might be on there right now. So if you let the list of files, just the file names, and creation dates and such, list of running processes, and you can just run a, there's some pretty standard tools you can run to do that. They're in volatility, which we'll look at later. For instant response, you don't need everything. You get a list uh, of things which you will probably include indicators of compromise. And that you can run easily on Linux or the Mac, because it's pretty simple. And that's in volatility. In volatility, they have two or three standard data acquisition modules that will just get all the usual stuff off any box, including a Mac, including Linux. But you don't get all the data. You get a small list of things that are probably useful, like a complete directory of all the files and um, all the processes that are running all the network connections. And that's usually enough to answer the question, is it infected? Is it in the process of downloading something? These yeah. are the tools you run on like, the 
machines you want to investigate, right? Yes. It, how do you get in in the first place if it's password alone? Oh, uh, for, it's a very good question. There are two techniques. The main one is if you're authorized, you have the administrator password. If you're using uh, VelociRaptor, you install an agent before and you need the administrator password to do that. If you want to get on one without knowing the administrator password, then you need to hack in. And this is what the criminals do, and it's also what the corporate people do. Um, you have to trick the user into clicking on a link or something, just the way the bad guys do. You send them an email or an instant message and get them to click on a link and get them to install something. That's typically how you do it. Or you find an account that will let you in with a default password or something, which is usually a lot easier than you think. Um, in a corporation anywhere, you have a lot of background processes. Well, obtain Windows passwords? Like, are there any tools? To obtain a Windows password? Yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of them. Um, probably the most powerful one is Responder. Um, you, Responder will watch all the network traffic for authentication, and it will pretend to be a file server, so the machine will try to connect to it, and it will send authentication information up, which you can then try to crack. It's encrypted, but if the password is not too complicated, you can often crack it. And um, but these are very good questions, and this is part of pen testing. So we're done. I finish, and it's still running in the corner. Uh, iOS analyzer, that's running stuff that doesn't matter. I bet I have data now. Let me see how it's going to look. So I should see it here in memdump, module output. Let's see. It's probably already there, because I think the stuff it's running is uh, stupid stuff that's not going to matter. I think it's already run the stuff that, yeah, here's module output. And there's eight of them, which I think, there they are, consoles, hash dump, image info. So consoles will show you the command line commands that were executed down here. So there it is, net user. Uh, somebody executed this command, and I uh, wonder if I can make it pop out. Do I double click? Uh, there's probably some way to make this box pop out, but uh, I'll just settle for making it a little bigger. All right, now I wonder if I can scroll there, down scrolling recently. All right, so here we're seeing, here's the Windows command line, and here's net user slash question mark to learn how to do it, and then they use the net user command to create some accounts down here, and you'll find a flag in one of the passwords. So you can see the command line commands that were executed, and apparently as administrator too. So this was in memory, recording what was done there. Here's the Windows password hashes. This is the way they look. You get them from a lot of tools. The first one is the old LM hash, which is no longer used. That's why it's always this dummy value. And the stuff at the end is the modern NTLM hash. Modern in quotes, it dates from 1993. It is one round of MD4 because it's so old, MD5 hadn't been invented yet. So it is one million times weaker than Linux password hashes or Mac password hashes because Microsoft has not updated their password hash in 30 years. But anyway, so you can take these and crack them, and you can crack a lot of them by just Googling them. But uh, there are a bunch of cracking tools if you can't do it that way. Here's uh, image info. This is the first thing it had to do. Like we're seeing, this is where it found out exactly what version of Windows you're running. Vista, Windows 2008, or Vista, this is where it, it determined which version of Windows you were running. Most hashes doesn't have any salt. Just like no salt, not in Windows hashes. No salt, one round of MD4. It is appalling. It was the state of the art in 1993. The rest of us moved beyond that, but not Microsoft. Anyway, um, all right, and then there's a lot of other things. Here's the list of running processes. You see various things down here, like when log on, when they logged on services and many other processes. Here's a network scan. This is just showing all the network connections and listening ports and everything. And here's LSA secrets being dumped, which include an unencrypted password which is true in a lot of versions of Windows. The administrator password is there in plain text to be stolen from the memory. Uh, and there's shell bags. Let's see what's in the shell bags. Um, here's information about ntuser.dat. And uh, here we go. Uh, here's a, yep, here's a VMware folder being opened, a shared folders. And here's a bunch of lists of what's been launched recently. Your name.exe has been run, bind, uh, I guess I'll be doing my DNS projects on here, launching Bind on a Windows server. Here's Wireshark. You know, here's all the programs that have been launched and uh, I think how many times they've been launched and stuff like that. And here's User Assist. User Assist stores a lot of information like about USB sticks that have been plugged in and such. Um, 
Here's hard NTUser.dat. Here's uh, Windows Update has been run. It has recently run programs too. Here's Notepad and so on. So that's the kind of information that you'll find there. And there's various flags to find from each of these. So that's what I wanted to show you. Um, when students get in trouble, it's usually because they forget to unzip the file and try to send the seven zip straight into autopsy and it won't work. You gotta unzip it first. All right, let me see if there are any uh, comments in the uh, chat. Uh, can you use a real memory dump if your system has the capacity? Yes, you could make a real memory dump. I think you can do it with FTK Imager. You can make a memory dump and then you can analyze your own memory dump. Um, would this help in troubleshooting a blue screen? Well, uh, if you had a blue screen, you wouldn't be able to get the memory dump. So what you do is you configure your system to automatically save a crash dump and then you analyze that. And typically you analyze it with um, Microsoft's debugger, WinDebug. And we do a little bit of that in the malware analysis class. But WinDebug has a steep learning curve. Is Twitch freezing? I didn't notice no issues. All right, all right, so I see no more questions there. I'm gonna stop this recording.